All right, well, so I was gonna do a three color pour, so I'm gonna cast a block. This is a HDPE block mold. Um, I sprayed mold release in it, so it's kind of got a slickness to it. I like to spray it away from where I'm casting, so that way I don't like spray something mm -hmm. that I'm gonna put in it. Like if you were doing color pencils and you got spray on your color pencils, well then the resin's not gonna stick no, to it very well. So I'm gonna use a block mold to cast in. Uh, I'm gonna use a temperature gun, obviously my cups and sticks, my scale. I've got three colors that I've been wanting to try together, pink, green, and black. I think they might make a cool mix. And then I'm gonna use a Lumalite urethane resin. You can use multiple kinds of resin. Uh, we also use epoxy resin here quite a bit, but we're gonna do this uh, for this one here. So uh, what I'm gonna do first is this, this is a one-to-one -one resin, epoxy is two-to-one. So for every one ounce of A, I'm gonna put in one ounce of B. But what I like to do first is pour all my A's and that way I can put my powder, my mica powder in there and mix them up. And I don't have to worry about time because as soon as I add part B, I'm on the clock, so to speak, of the curing. So with this stuff, generally I have in the cooler weather, I have about 10 minutes to work with it. Right now, even though it's not super hot in here, it's hot outside and it's dry. So it does speed it up even though it's not as hot in here. So you got limited time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, six ounces of each. So three ounces of A, three ounces of B per cup. So I'll find my A here, and I just go through and fill them all with three ounces. And then this will give me time to make sure I get my colors how I want and all that. This is a woodworker's three ounces. Okay. So if we're within a quarter of an inch, you know, we're yeah. good. Okay. Um, I do try to be as accurate as possible. My scale goes two decimal places. As long as I'm within, 0.05, usually I'm okay. okay. So you can usually get pretty close with just the drops. So I like to take my A and kind of set it aside so I don't accidentally grab it when I'm going there. But what's kind of cool is we'll do these mixes. Now, black is a fairly normal size mica. Has anyone worked with mica before? Oh, yeah. No? So mica is just a powder. And uh, there's different sizes of the grains of mica. Some are kind of larger, like this is pretty normal, but then some are super powdery. And that's what we'll see with these. These are almost like working with like flour. Well, I don't have a lot in there, but they get kind of clumpy. So you can see it looks like little clumps in there, not just like solid powder. And that's just because they're all kind of sticking to each other. So I'm gonna put this in and then I'll show you how I kind of make sure I don't have clumps. And I generally give it a couple scoops. Um, it's hard with a popsicle stick to kind of know how much I'm doing. But what I do when I pull the resin out, if I can see the stick through it, you know, I know it'll be transparent because I'm actually going to be doubling the amount of resin in here. So you have to have enough mica in this case to make sure that it'll color the resin you have in here plus part B when you put it in because it's going to thin it out somewhat. But if you look, if I pull this out quickly, the green doesn't let the the wood show so I should be okay. So I like to stir it once and then I'll let it sit while I stir the others and any of those clumps will ra raise to the surface and I think it's because they're kind of like an air pocket trapping that powder with no resin getting inside so it floats. So that kind of gives me an opportunity to spot the, the stuff that's float up and, and not uh, mixed in well. And the pink is really bad for it. So it looks like it's all stirred in, but you'll see when I show you in a sec, the clumps will float. So we're gonna mix this once, kind of pop any bubbles and then add our part B, and then we're gonna mix again. And the reason we're mixing again is because one, we have to stir up the B, but that gives us an, a chance to stir it up more. Now, I always like to take my temperature when I just have the A in there, because temperature is how I judge when to pour things. So this is 77 degrees. Once I put part B in there, it's going to almost instantly start climbing. And I want to wait till about 95 to 100 degrees, and then I'll do my, my mixing in my mold. The reason I'm waiting for that time is if I pour too soon, the colors will kind of just mix together like mud. Whereas if I wait till that higher temperature, they're going to stay separated. So they'll be next to each other, but you'll have green and pink versus green and pink mixed up. Nice. Yeah. Yeah brown. yeah, brown. So this one looks pretty good. I don't have any air or uh, pockets, but here you can see, see on the side of the cup, there's all the like, you know, 
little chunks of mica. So this stuff I have to stir really well, and I kind of like to smash them up against the side to pop those little pockets of mica. But it's only a few colors that have this kind of a, a thing. There's some whites and some fluorescence and things, and I don't know what it is, just finer material. So you just gotta take a little extra care. So now I'm gonna zero my scale, and I'm gonna add three ounces of B. And I always like to look to make sure I have the B. So remember I said it'll start heating up almost immediately. So 77, hasn't changed. I'll put this in and then we'll take the temperature again. And I like to kind of try to get my multiple cups poured as quickly as I can. Because if I stopped and stirred that one and then poured this, that one is gonna have more time and it's gonna be heating up faster. So I'm gonna put all the B in them and then stir them. See, we're 0.03 over, which is just fine. Okay, so now I'll stir them up. But here, before I even stir it, I'll take the temp. 77.7, so it didn't heat up much. Having air conditioning will really help. If you're out in the swamp-cooled shop, or worse, no swamp cooler, this would be, I mean, you'd, obviously you'd be starting with a higher temp. Your resin would just be naturally warm. But you, you have to really watch that. So a lot of people pour based on time, and I don't do that. I pour based on temperature. And that's because if I pour in the winter, even in this building, it would be, you know, in the 60s. And in the summer, it might be in the 70s or 80 or whatever. So it's going to be a different temperature all the time, which affects the time that you have to mix and pour your resin. So by using a temp gun and going by temperature, I can kind of know my time year round, whether it's hot or cold. I just know I start pouring at that 95 degrees or 100 degrees. It allows me to do it the same year round, no matter, no matter the temperature. Now, if it's really humid out, you don't want to do any resin casting. And really humid for us is obviously different than for other people around the country. But if it's 40 plus percent here, I don't do any resin casting because even in an air conditioned room, there's enough moisture coming in. It can start to affect your resin and it'll get foamy or it'll turn it white. It's kind of weird. But resins don't like moisture. All right. Now that we've mixed, we're at 82, so it's gone up five degrees fairly quickly. And I can already feel the temp on the, on the wall of this here. It'll start to heat up pretty quick. And you want to make sure you mix thoroughly. You really can't overmix, uh, but you can definitely undermix. And undermixing will cause it to either not cure properly, or it'll extend the cure time, or it'll just not cure at all. So it's really worth your time because you know, by the time you've bought molds and resin and micas, you've spent some money on this, so you don't want to give yourself any chance to fail or have a bad pour. So it's really worth it just to stir, especially because you can't really walk away from this because you have limited time. So you might as well stir while you're waiting. So let's see what we're at. 86, 85, and 82.9. So you can see it's like a degree or two and then a couple more degrees. So just that little bit of time that it takes to pour in the cup from the part B, it changes that much, which is kind of kind of weird. But it does happen pretty quickly. That one's at 90 now. This one's at 87.8 and 86. So we're still just climbing pretty quickly and I can feel it. So it's, it's funny, you can feel it getting warm in the cup. And then also when you stir it, it stirs like it's just a little thicker. And that's what we're looking for. So the more you can wait, the better. However, it's a fine line you're walking because you have to pour it, do whatever you're going to do with the pouring, and then get it in the pressure pot and full before it sets too much. Because if it's set too much and you put it in the pressure pot, your air bubbles are going to be trapped. So you still want it liquid enough that you can compress the air, but not too far. So it takes a little practice, which is fine, but that's why I use the temperature gun versus time because you know, if I was using eight minutes or so right now, it probably would be time to pour. But by using temperature, I know exactly where the resin's at. So that one's 93.5, 91.9, and 89.5. So we're, we're right there. What I usually do when it gets this close is I'll give it one final stir here, and then I'm gonna put my sticks to the side. And you can reuse stirring sticks too. Generally, you can just wipe them off, or a lot of times I'll lay them on a, in a mold and they'll just harden 
and then they're just thicker sticks because the resin, once it's hard, the color won't come off of it. So if you're mixing other stuff, you don't have to worry about the color. There's a lot of waste in resin casting, so it's nice to be able to reuse some of the stuff. And you can see that pink, it thins out as it falls, but it's pretty good. All right, 98, 96, 95. So you see how quickly that escalated, so to speak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch these two. I'll do two at a time here. And I'm just gonna kind of zigzag a little bit. And this doesn't really matter as long as you get some of the color around. Well, don't pour off the thing there like that. And I'm a messy caster, so that's all right. And the black will really take over, but that's kind of intentional with this particular cast. So you can see I'm kind of pouring sideways one direction. And that'll be because when I go to drag my stick, I'm going to go the other way. And a lot of these colors will sink through each other. So you can see that pink is kind of turning like reddish with the green, but there's nothing we can do about it. Let's try to make it look cool. And you don't have to pour side to side like this. You can zigzag it, go back and forth, whatever you want. It's always gonna look different. Even if I poured it exactly the same every time, it's terrible how it will look different because <laughs> you can't really, you can't make the same thing. Now, see how this green is not sinking like it was before? It's floating on top. That means our resin's getting thicker, which is good. All right, then I'll just top it off with this black. Now, if I didn't do anything with this stick, this would look really cool. Uh, it doesn't have to have any kind of, thank you, any kind of mixing. But what I'm going to do is just put it in and I'm going to kind of pull it and you can see the lines in the black, how they kind of look cool. And I'm just dragging it through. And you'll get kind of that swirl look in there. But I'm going to very carefully, and I'm just going to pull it right out and be done. So if I had like done this, I mean, that would have stirred it. But by carefully dragging it, it's weird because you saw how I zigzagged those layers and then I put more. It, it'll pull them and actually kind of swirl them just by dragging that stick through. It gets really cool effects. So we won't know obviously until we cut it, but it's gonna look really good, I'm sure. So I'm just using this pot rack. This is, um, it has shelves that you can put in here for multiple casts. But really for me, I use it even with just one because it's a lot easier to do this than it is to try to set that down there without spilling it all over. So I use a pot rack whether I'm casting one thing or five things, just because of that. And then this is a California Air Tools pressure pot. It's a little two and a half gallon. This is what I recommend for most people because of the size. It's really easy to use. And we're going to fill this up to 40 pounds. Between 40 and 50 is, is always pretty good. Uh, you'll hear people say, you know, 80 pounds, 100 pounds. You never need it. Unless you're doing organic materials that just need it for some reason. You rarely need it. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming out. And we'll be doing, like I said, more demos uh, fairly regularly. So if you just look at that calendar tab on the website, it shows all the demos. And uh, it's nice to do them so you can see them in person. But if you're ever not in person and you want to see it, we'll probably live stream most of them as well.